All right, students, here were the review stations we did for Unit 2. Make sure you also study your 3D stuff, because this was just the, the two-dimensional stuff. All right, so we've got here a picture, air hockey. We need to find the missing sides and angles of the triangle, and the total distance that the hockey puck traveled. So, all right, looks like we got everything we need. So... If I know that this is 20, and this is so this is 40 down here, 20 up here, that makes 60. So if I do 180 minus 60, you get 120 degrees to finish out my triangle. And there's 8 feet. So I can use law of sines and do sine of 120 over 8 equals sine of 40 over x. I can also do sine of 120 over 8 equals sine of 20 over y. I'm going to cross multiply to get x times sine of 120 equals 8 times sine 40. So x is 8 times sine 40 divided by sine of 120. This is going to be basically the same thing. 8 times sine of 20 divided by sine of 120. It's nice sometimes when you're doing law of sines to do them both at once because they're going to come out to be basically the same structure for each of them. So um, make sure that when you're typing it in that you use parentheses around your angle, sine of 40, parentheses. And so this one is for x is approximately 5.94. Go back to my thing and type in sine of 20 instead. Y is approximately 3.16. And if you add those together, you get approximately 9.1. So the total distance is approximately 9.1. These are all measured in feet, so make sure that you're getting your units of measurement on it. So that was one of the stations we did. All right, a lot of cosines here. We know two side lengths and the angle in between them, so I can set up a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c equals c squared. I can type in all of that fun stuff there. Type it all in as one strong or one long line. 937.84 equals c squared. Take the square root of that answer, and I get that the c value is about 30.62. What am I actually supposed to figure out? What is the distance between the airplanes? Nailed it. What are the angles between the airplanes and the tower? Okay, so I want to know this angle and this angle right here. So I could do either law of sines or I could do law of cosines. I'm going to do law of cosines because this is called the law of cosines activity or review station, I guess. So let's call this angle A here. So then I know that for angle A, I'm going to use the other two sides around it. So I'm going to say 30.62 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 30.62 times 25 cosine of angle A equals 20 squared. We've got kind of three different chunks of calculation. So 30.62 squared plus 25 squared. This first chunk becomes 1562.58. 2 times 30.62 times 25 is 1531 times cosine a, 20 squared is 400. So now I'm subtracting 1562 from 1562.58 from 400. So 400 minus 1562.58. So I have negative 1531 cosine a equals negative 1162.58. 
divide by the negative 1531. And so I have cosine of A is equal to 0.759. So I take the inverse cosine of that, and I get that A is approximately 40.59 degrees. And then I know that my angles all add up to 180. So I add 85 to that and subtract from 180. And I get approximately that B is approximately 54.41. So that's it for the law of cosines. So then the next one, sector area here, we got pizza, two medium pizzas for 1350 or one large pizza for 1550. And the mediums are eight inches in diameter, eight, and this is 16. Okay, so right here, if we order the medium pizzas, then each slice is an eighth of a pizza. So that would be 45 degrees. So you can do this two ways. You can use our, our sector area formula, which is just angle over 360 times pi r squared. Or you could think of it as one eighth of a pizza. So if you order the medium, each person is going to get one eighth that's the same as 45 divided by 360 of pi times 4 squared. So I gave you an 8-inch diameter along that. You can type that in. 1 8th times pi times 4 squared. You're going to get 6.28 square inches of pizza with the medium plan. If you order the large, then it's 12 inches in diameter, but you get 1 16th of it. So you could calculate that that's 22 and a half degrees, or you could just say that's 1 16th of a pizza with a radius of six. And so just type that in, 1 16th times pi times six squared. And that comes out to be 7.07 7 square inches of pizza. So you might think that the large is the better deal. However, they have different prices. So we should look at what the cost per square inch is. So if I do um, 6.28, let's see, cost per square inch. So I'm going to divide by square inches. Whenever you see the word per, it means to divide. So cost per square inch means the cost, 1350, divided by the square inches. So I just did 1350 over 6.28 square inches. So this is for the medium. This tells me that I'm spending approximately $2.15, $2.15 per square inch for the medium. But if I look at the large, then I'm going to do $15.50 divided by 7.07 .07 square inches. And so if I go 15.50 divided by 7.07, .07, we get $2.19 per square inch. So you actually are spending four more cents per square inch of pizza. So at that idea, the medium is a slightly better deal. By the way, you could have also done um, square inches divided by dollars, and you would have just got that it is um, inverse, that it costs less for the other one. So you can always do your rate either way. And um, I just chose to do it that way because that's the way it came out of my mouth. All right, here we go. Heptagon, area of the pasta, and would I eat this pasta? Uh, the answer to the second question is obvious. Yes, I would eat this pasta. A heptagonal pasta would be sweet. So here is four millimeters, and we know that it is a seven-sided pizza. So we can go 360 cut into seven is not a nice number, but it's about 51.4. So that's the angle right here. And so then the area is 1 half times A times B times the sine of C. And so the area of one little chunk is 6.25. So this is just the area of a triangle. 
And so then the area of the pasta is that times 7. 43.77 millimeters squared. And that's it for the review sheets. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy studying.